Do that. All right, I want to start off by saying welcome to anyone who is catching the recording of this webinar. We're sorry to have missed you on the live version, but really glad that you are catching the replay. Um, let me share my screen. All right, I hope everybody can see this okay. Um, while we're gonna give a few minutes for more people to trickle in, um, here they come. Nice to see you guys, Will, Allison, and Elizabeth. Um, if you guys want to share in the chat while we're waiting, um, just who you are, what organization you work for, um, and if you have any particular questions that you're hoping we will cover in today's session. Um, my name is Patty. I'm with the Purpose Collective. There's a few of us from the Purpose Collective that are going to be on the call today. Um, Michelle, my co-host, as well as our other two members, Julie and Aaron, should be here too. Hello, Allison from Blink Now. Lovely to see you. Um, so yeah, thank you, Iris, for sharing the chat. Just who you are, what organization you're from, um, and if you have any questions. I can see you're just looking for some new and fun ways to share gratitude with your donors. Perfect, we're gonna be going over that. Um, hi, Katie, nice to see you. Totally fine if you need to be on mute and have your camera off, I completely understand that. Um, there will be times during this presentation where we will be asking for your input if you wanna share it, um, if you have any experiences that you'd like to share. You can either unmute at that time or um, you can pop it in the chat, whatever works for you. Hi, JD, nice to see you. Hi, Megan. Um, new to development, awesome, welcome. All right. Um, I think people will continue to trickle in. We're going to go ahead and get started just in the interest of time. Um, and I will be doing my best to, both Michelle and I will be doing our best to keep our eye on the chat. Um, but if there are any really great questions that we miss while we're talking, we'll be sure to address them at the end. That's why we have Julia here with us today, Julia Molinero, who's going to help um, make sure that you guys get the most out of this as possible. Um, all right, so what we're talking about today are five ways to make your donors feel the love before the holiday giving season. Um, and this subtitle that we have here before the holiday giving season is actually a pretty important point. Um, we believe that there is no better time than right now to make your donors feel the love. So right now at this moment is the beginning of October. Um, actually, no matter when you might be watching the replay of this webinar, it's still true. Right now, whenever now is, is a great time to make your donors feel the love. Um, oh, hi, Liana, nice to see you. And why, why do we say that? Why is now, no matter when now is, the perfect time to make people feel loved? Um, it's basically because if you do a really, really great job of making your donors feel appreciated and feel like you love them and you see them and you remember them and you appreciate all they've done for you, they're gonna be much more likely to donate when you do ask them for money. Mm -hmm. And here in the nonprofit world, most of us are asking for money during the holiday giving season. So November and December, Starting with Giving Tuesday, I think we, most of us would say it's the official kickoff to the holiday giving season. So <clears throat> the average organization is going to be making a lot of asks during the year end holiday giving season. A lot of donors are going to be doing a lot of giving during that season as well. And so we want to make sure that your donors have heard from you before all of this asking starts. So that's why we think it's really important to start showering them with love right now. 
Um, we love data here at the Purpose Collective. So of course we have a statistic to back this up. Um, our friends at Next After, I don't know if anyone is familiar with them, but they are a wonderful organization that um, tests everything. They test what happens if you send an email with this language versus this language. What happens if you send an email with more photos versus less photos? What results in more donations? And so they did a test to see what happens if you add more cultivation emails to your regular communication with your donors. So um, cultivation means non-ask emails, things like gratitude, the things we're gonna be talking about today. What happens if you bump up um, that type of communication for six months. Um, the organization that they did the test with saw a 41% increase in online revenue. So it's nice to thank your donors just from like a feel good perspective. It's also smart from a data perspective. You will likely see an increase in giving during the holiday giving season if you increase your cultivation. So that's our philosophy for success. If we can make your donors feel engaged and appreciated prior to the giving season, um, it's gonna be a much more successful season for everyone. All right, so let's jump into this. We're gonna go over our top five things that we think you should do to show your donors the love. And I'm gonna pass this over to my colleague, Michelle. I'm gonna kick off the first one um, with, giving your donors a call. Um, this call is super simple, it's just to say thanks, and you'll be surprised, um, as Patty's mentioning, uh, a simple thank you with a donor goes a long way in making them feel valued. Um, a study by Bloomerang, a donor management uh, tool, found that uh, donors that received um, a phone call within 90 days of their first gift we're likely to give again. So again, this is cultivating um, your supporter and just showing you the impact of a call. But again, uh, this is just focused on thanks. We're not getting our head ahead of ourselves. We're just saying thank you, just popping into um, our supporter's phone. Um, and we have a few ways to do this. Um, we're gonna move to the next slide. And we encourage having some fun with it. Uh, you know, uh, divide and conquer. Um, so bring along a team of volunteers, board members to help out with this. Um, if you can set up a fun call center like you see below, uh, that would be uh, both fun and effective. Um, but the idea is, you know, you can jot down a few talking points, um, maybe that share the impact of a donor's gift or uh, asking them questions, learning more about them, why they're passionate about your cause, um, causes that they're interested in, and to make sure you log this information um, for the future. This is handy information for down the line when you're speaking to your supporter again. Um, if you have a CRM tool, perfect place to include this information. And if you don't have the time um, or volunteer team to support a call center like this, we do have an easiest way option. Um, a tool that we love is Fly broadcast, and it allows you to go directly to voicemail. So you can, um, on the back end of the software, upload all of your uh, donor contact information and um, send out a pre recorded voicemail, uh, perhaps you or someone from your team, um, that'll consistently go to all of your supporters' voicemail directly. Um, you can send about, I think, a thousand uh, direct to voicemail calls for. $60 or so. So it's a cost-effective option that allows you to just have that touch point um, with your supporters during this important time. And I'm just curious, has anyone um, gotten one of these Sly broadcast voicemails? You can like raise a hand, put a plus one in the chat if you've ever received these. Um, I'm seeing a lot of no's. Um, Liana's got one. Um, Liana, I'm curious, did, did it feel convincing to you when you got the pre-recorded voicemail? Do you want to share? Sure. Share with that? Um, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Um, so I've actually not been, I, I don't remember the one that I received, but every year during the holidays, our CEO and president of our nonprofit organization um, records just a simple thank you message. And that's it. It's not an ask, just like you're saying cultivation goes a long way. It's not like right around the holiday rush because we find people just don't answer their phones anyway, but people are convinced. Um, so I worked on fundraising. So I hear the response and they're like, we just were so glad to get Cheryl's message and we're so impressed that she's reaching out to everyone. Um, and I like, I don't, they don't think it's live necessarily, but it means a lot that people are thinking to engage the leadership of an organization, especially to donors who don't often hear from people in those positions. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. So I imagine what, what, she did was just record a one size fits all message that's like hi Cheryl just wanted to call and say thank you so much for your support we really appreciate you over here and then you just push that out to everyone which sounds pretty simple um the way it works it makes your phone ring for like a fraction of a second so no one can pick it up and then it leaves the voicemail um I will say as a millennial myself I don't like phone calls so I'd much prefer to get a voicemail or I don't have to talk to someone um but yeah, this is this is a strategy that you can try. Um, since I am seeing that a lot of people aren't familiar with this, I think it means that you can um, you can get away with doing this. This isn't super common yet. So like if your organization is doing this, um, it could be pretty convincing. All right. Um, the second one here is at first glance not going to seem like um, a very unique method, but trust me when I say that it is. Um, so we suggest writing a personalized email and we really emphasize that this should be a plain text email. So I'm sure many of you guys are already sending emails to your supporters, um, mass emails that are beautifully designed with gorgeous photos and with your logo in there. Um, we actually recommend keeping it casual and, and personal. So stripping all of that out and just sending like an actual email, something that if you were to sit down at your computer and write an email to me, what would it look like? Um, and tell your supporters why they matter and share a difference about the, share a story about the difference that their donation has made. These can be really impactful. Um, similar to, I'm oh, sorry, before I get ahead of myself, um, another little data point for you guys, a plain text email, is 25% more likely to be opened than an HTML style email according to HubSpot. So these personal messages, I think a lot of us are sort of um, starving for more genuine personal communication. We get a lot of what feels like corporate one size fits all communication. And so these messages that feel like a person actually wrote this to me, I think we're a lot more interested in opening them. Okay, so similar to the phone call method, if you wanna recruit people to help, um, you can create a list of the donors who you wanna email, um, create a template mm -hmm. of what you want the message to be. And then you can have whoever it is, whether it's staff members or board members, or even volunteers, if that feels like the right fit, um, you can have them send out these messages. We have found anytime that you're recruiting people to help with a task like this, the more specific you can be in your instructions, the less the person has to um, improvise and come up with their own ideas for something, the more successful you will be. So here's an example. I of need you to really... your strong voice, please. Sorry, what was that? Okay, moving on. Um, the more that you can provide a template for someone to just fill in exactly what is what it is that you want them to put in, the better. So I think an, an, an open-ended request, like please send an email to the supporter to thank them. Some people might be like, what do I say? I don't know if I really want to do that. I've got all this other stuff to do. But if we can make it really clear and say, here's your template. I need you to put two things in here. I need you to put in a donor name and I need you to put in your favorite program area that we work on. Send it out to the 10 people on this list, please and thank you. Um, I think that that could be really well received by whoever you are recruiting to help you. 
Um, similar to the first one, we have a way to make this easier. So here's an example of a plain text email that we received from an organization. Um, as you can see, this is four sentences. It's really short. Um, I don't actually know if this email was like automatically generated from some program or whether Jody Landers actually sat down and wrote this to me, but I was pretty convinced that she did send this to me personally. This was triggered by a Giving Tuesday donation. Yours doesn't have to be triggered by anything. You can just send it just because. We just wanted to say you're wonderful. I don't think any donor in the history of the world has ever complained about being thanked too much. So I think it's fine to send these out of the blue. Um, and you can see it's it looks very convincing. It came from her, her email address, her picture is showing up there, her signatures at the end of it. Um, it's brief, which is believable. I could imagine that a nonprofit professional wouldn't have a lot of time to sit down and write me a lengthy email. So these plain text messages um, can be super simple to throw together. And I think they go a long way for the people receiving them. Um, and it is possible to sort of hack your email client to send these plain text messages for you in bulk if that's something that you want to do. Um, so if you are using something like MailChimp to send emails, um, it is possible for you to create a template that looks convincingly like a plain text email. In fact, we have created one such template, all this coding that you see on the right. We wrote that so that you get a really convincing email that shows up on the left. If you would like a copy of this plain text code for your own MailChimp email, we'd be more than happy to share this with you. Just send me an email, we can get that over to you. Um, but one thing I did wanna go back to the slide to emphasize is um, if you have an email welcome journey set up, um, the first email in that series can be a plain text message that, um, that we'll talk about um, that can do this, that can that can show the gratitude, thank the donor. Um, so you know that that is happening throughout the year. Just curious, quick show of hands or pop it in the chat. Um, who already has an email welcome journey set up for their organization? Allison's got one. Yeah, you do, you have a great one. Um, Christina, I think you said you have one, awesome. Drafting one right now, perfect, it's in the works. So yeah, this this is another place to like put in those plain text messages so you know that when a donor makes a donation or they join your newsletter list or whatever action they take with you throughout the year, they're getting these plain text messages, they're getting that gratitude from you, they're getting that personal touch from you. Now is also a great time to just do another one on top of everything. Um, so we got a question, wouldn't email platforms trigger a spam setting on donors' emails? Um, I don't think so. Ideally, um, I, I hope I'm understanding the question correctly. Like if you're if you send an email from MailChimp, is that more likely to be marked as spam than if you sent it from your own email? Um, I hope that's I'm I'm interpreting that correctly, but ideally no. Ideally your emails are not being marked as spam um, because they're not spam. They're genuine messages from you to your supporters. Um, there's a few things you can do, like verifying your domain, authenticating your domain so that your emails are showing up as legitimately from you, not from you via MailChimp or from you via Constant Contact. Um, we can talk about that some more as well, but let me know if I didn't quite answer that question correctly. Hey, our uh, tip number three or way number three to have your donors feel the love is sending a handwritten card. So I know for many organizations, you might have um, a direct okay, mail strategy in place. Um, our recommendation is to consider sending a handwritten letter as well, or a card. Um, it could be a simple design um, and it would just express your gratitude and say thanks again. Um, I have a question for everyone. Uh, any guesses in how many pieces of personal mail um, a household receives per year on average? Feel free to throw in the chat or 
uh, get off mute. Uh, but this would exclude like any cards or imitations or credit card offers or uh, nice. Great. I see Patty's 50, 10, five. Uh, as you guys can tell, it's really quite low. 10 is exactly the right number. You do not get, or a typical household does not get a lot of handwritten mail. Um, I was surprised by how low this is, but this is just another way to really stand out um, and to know, to let your supporters know that, that you care. So we'll dive into how to do this um, on this next slide. Uh, again, this is a great chance to engage volunteers. If you have an office, this can be a fun afternoon of card writing um, to uh, spend this time together. And also, you know, this isn't necessarily that time sensitive. We are coming to the end of the year right now, but this could be an activity that's done throughout the year, um, earlier in the year, and um, prepared for this moment of sending uh, these cards during kind of this upcoming holiday season. We do have a recommendation on the easiest way to do this if you don't have the bandwidth to do it um, among volunteers or staff. Uh, there's a tool called Handy Written. Um, it allows you to kind of do custom de designed um, cards that are written by robots. Uh, truly, this handwriting is really convincing. Uh, you cannot tell that a, a computer wrote it. Here's an example of what it looks like. And in fact, this is probably neater than my own handwriting. So if you have poor handwriting like me uh, and perhaps don't have the bandwidth to do this on your own, um, this is a great option to make your uh, card feel really personalized. Um, you have a bunch of different um, handwritings to choose from, uh, one that might match yours better or one that you honestly just like. Um, these cards are about three dollars each to send out so it could be a pricey option or you can think about the supporters that you most want to send a card to um, if it's an important part of something creative that you want to try at the end of the year um, but you need to decide how many to send based on budget all right the next one um, I think some people might be inwardly cringing at this one, but it's easier than it sounds. Uh, we recommend recording a video update. Um, and this can be super short. Just if you want to just have your computer camera record you saying, hi, we're just here to say thank you so much. We really appreciate all the support that you've provided for us over the years. It means a lot to have you with us on this journey. Um, thank you again. And that's like a 15 second video. It's easier than you might think, but um, we think these videos are super impactful for donors. So this is where you would actually wanna personalize this to someone you'd wanna say the donor's first name. This would not be a one size fits all video. Um, and they don't need to be super polished or professional. In fact, um, the less polished they are, the more it looks like I actually just recorded this video at my desk, the better, because it's more convincing. It makes you feel like um, this was created just for you. Um, so we recommend recording these short videos for everyone, if you can, a shorter list of people who are important to you, if that feels like a better fit for your time and your bandwidth on this. Um, and this is a great task that you can recruit other people to help you with as well. You can send um, a, a list out to board members, to staff members, to volunteers and say, okay, I need you to record these five videos for these five names, James, David, Susan, um, et cetera. And once those videos are recorded, you can upload them to YouTube as an unlisted video. I hope everyone is familiar with this method of uploading on YouTube. So that means that um, there will be a link to it that someone can watch, but it's not gonna show up publicly in your video library. And so you can send that, that personalized YouTube link to the donor in an email saying, we've recorded this just for you. Thank you so much. Um, we have an example of just how easy this video is to do, um, recorded by our own Julia. Monero. I wonder, I want to make sure that 
you guys can hear my audio. I don't know if you'll be able to. No, no, not no audio. Yet. This is always the struggle with Zoom. Um, let's try it this way. donation on Giving Tuesday. We're totally blown away by your support. Thanks to you, we're able to educate and empower hundreds of children here in Nepal, like these sixth and ninth graders that I have here with me. We're just so totally blown away, and we love you. Bye. So, you can hear it, I hope? Yes, great. Um, that video was 22 seconds long. Um, Julia, I don't know if you want to say anything about how easy or difficult it was to record that. It was super easy to record. We probably just, I had these kids together and we probably did 20 videos in less than 20 minutes. We just had like a really simple script and had their first name and then the benefit is that if it's a common name like James, you might get two or three recipients out of that one video. Awesome. And this, of course, Julia happened to be in Nepal at this time. And so she had wonderful Nepali students to make this video even better. But even if you're just sitting at your desk in the United States, this works great. Um, there is an easy way to do this through a program called ThankView. I don't know if anybody here has ever used ThankView before. Um, this is a wonderful program that sort of centralizes the process of recording videos for donors. So it allows you to have like a dashboard where you can say, okay, I want to assign this donor to Julia. I want you to make a video for this donor and then this donor I'm going to assign him to Michelle Michelle I'd like you to make a video for this donor and your team would upload their videos straight to thank you I think they record them in the platform itself and so it's a really streamlined process you can send the email from the platform itself um, out to your supporters I'm not sure exactly what the pricing is I believe it's about $150 a month for thank you so this could be something that you could consider paying for just for one month or two months, just to send a batch of videos out. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be a cost that you keep on for the whole year, but the guys at ThankView have done a really great job with their platform. Um, Katie, I see you're saying in the chat that when you went and visited the school in Kenya in July, you asked all 150 girls to write thank you notes to supporters. That's awesome and you got a great response that's wonderful um i imagine you probably also filmed some videos while you were there knowing you so great use of your your time in kenya okay and the final tip that we have here um and we'll review all of all five of them in a second uh, but it's to mail a thanksgiving postcard this might be uh, if you're thinking about all of these options and which ones you want to incorporate into your organization's year-end strategy, um, this might be the one that kicks everything off. Um, sending a simple Thanksgiving postcard, uh, a holiday that is very much filled with gratitude um, and participating in that as well. Um, you'll be able to get to your supporters' um, mailboxes before a lot of direct mail appeals um, so that you're top of mind as you uh, continue your your end strategy, whatever it might be, an email campaign or something like that. Um, but they'll have this nice um, memory of you to kick off this entire season. So uh, oh, this little fact here, 64% of people um, think that greeting cards make them feel special, which is just, again, really nice to, to personalize some content and to make them to um, make your supporters feel seen. And our recommended way of doing this, um, again, volunteers, staff members, um, anyone that can participate with helping out hand with handwritten cards, um, you can 
have really nice design cards printed by um, Vistaprint or if anyone uses Canva, um, they have really easy design options where you can bulk order. I think they start at like 50 pieces of postcards and you can order up from there. Um, they're pretty inexpensive and you can have them all shipped directly to you before putting together these cards. Um, I believe Canva and Vistaprint also offer uh, envelopes as well. So you can make it pretty easy and get all the materials you need um, to ship these out, to send these out. And we do have an easiest option. Um, so if you use MailChimp as your email provider, um, this is one method that makes things really simple. Um, you can upload a postcard design and, and MailChimp will help you print stamp um, deliver to your supporter's address. Um, and these come in yeah, nice little postcard size um, mailers uh, that I think you just want to schedule out a few days in advance to make sure that it hits a mailbox in time. Um, but this is a pretty simple option, especially if you're using MailChimp already. I believe this is about a dollar a postcard. Does that sound right to you? Yeah. So a pretty cost-effective option, if especially if you're like, I don't want to deal with handwriting a bunch of postcards and putting those in the mail. All right, so in summary, these are the five methods we definitely, definitely recommend for showing your donors more love. The sooner the better. If you can do this now, awesome. Um, number one, give your donors a call or record a pre-recorded voicemail and let Sly broadcast, give your donors a call. Number two, write a personalized email, plain text email. Um, if you would like our MailChimp template so that you can do this in bulk through your email provider, shoot us an email, shoot us a message, we'll get you that um, code that you can pop in. Number three, send a handwritten card or make the robots do it for you through the handwritten program. Um, number four, record a video update or better yet, just sign up for thank you and farm out this task to your community of volunteers and staff members and board members and have them record a few videos each for you. And number five, mail a really good looking Thanksgiving postcard that people will be proud to put on their refrigerator and they'll think of you every time they walk through their kitchen and they will be even more ready to give during the holiday giving season. All right, what questions can we answer for you guys? And are there any other services that will mail the postcard for you if you upload addresses? Michelle, do you know that one? Uh, I think maybe you printing. I'd have to double check that. I think you printing is a um, another service option that has quite a few different sizes and allows you to upload your mailing list um, and they'll handle it all for you. We've and also used Vistaprint um, to do the same. And Handwritten does all the mailing, right? Like they write the card, send it in the mail, everything. Mm -hmm. um, please do feel free to put more questions in the chat or raise your hand, unmute yourself. I, I do want to make sure I mention quickly that um, we offer free office hours every Monday. Um, so you that is a one-on-one -on -one time slot with us. You can sign up and we can answer any questions that you might have about anything we talked about today or anything else. If you're like, okay, I use MailChimp, but I do not understand how to make this plain text template, we can walk you through it on an office hours call. Um, if you're like, all right, I think I have the language for what I want to put in these thank you cards or in these voicemails, but I'd really just like another set of eyes on this. Can you guys review it and talk it over with me. We're happy to do anything that helps with getting this kicked off. Um, something else I wanna mention is that 
as a nonprofit, you can qualify for a reduced postage rate with the US Postal Service. Um, you just wanna make sure that you apply for that in advance. I'm guessing a lot of you already do mailers and you already have that discount in place, um, but I do wanna make sure that we mention that. Um, okay, question from Caroline. Do we have any idea whether Thanksgiving timing is better for the postcard than early mid-December? Um, great question. I wonder, Allison, I see you're on the call. I, I wonder if you want to chime in. I know you guys often do a Thanksgiving postcard. Do you feel like that's a good timing or a Thanksgiving note at least? Um, we usually do. Thanks, Patty. Um, we usually do a Thanksgiving email of gratitude. We have a really large international donor base. So mail is not often our primary we do a year-end mailing um, to US and Canada that we hope to hit mailboxes right after Thanksgiving. So they're one of the first ones to get in the door. But we um, this year we're trying actually a, a warm-up where this week and then probably the first week in November, we're sending out some of our first newsletters, which are just communication and no solicitation, kind of getting people used to having our mail in their mailbox before Giving Tuesday and year end. Um, so Patty, we have done emails on Thanksgiving and the person who, who signs them then gets all these people replying to them. And then that person who sent them feels like, oh, I've got to spend my Thanksgiving day responding to these people. <laughs> and um, I, I think sending something out a day or two before Thanksgiving is probably more realistic. You know, if we're trying to convince the donor that they received an individual personalized email. I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you. That's great to hear that you get a lot of responses. So it sounds like that Thanksgiving week is a good time to be contacting people. It sounds like they're receptive to hearing from you then. I think one other, one other thought on this is um, just how busy December gets. I think we've experienced and have seen um, printers delayed because they're just printing so much during this period. And, um, and of course that impacts, um, postal delivery and how, or why it's called snail mail and how, um, direct mail, especially in December can sometimes be delayed. So I think in general, whether you're sending around Thanksgiving time or sometime in December, um, to keep in mind to maybe budget a few extra days, knowing that they're maybe delays. Um, I also want to open it up if anyone else has any um, special gratitude touch points that have been really successful for you that you'd like to share with the group. We'd love to hear about it or kind of like the things that you've already shared. Like if you've done one of these and it went really well um, and you want to share that with the group, we, we'd love to hear that. I have one, Patty. I know it was already mentioned a little bit, but um, we're starting to leverage and engage our board more in thanking major donors. Um, and that does really go a long way. Like even if people have had a long relationship with me as a gift officer, it's really nice for them to have as many different points of connection across our organization. So we found that really impactful. And we try and do a good job of giving the board very explicit instructions and identifying donors and board members who have some alignment of interest or professions or something um, so that it feels a little bit less random or they have some sort of thing that they can mention, like a personal touch. Um, so we found that has been um, really uh, meaningful to our donors, um, but not everyone has the bandwidth to do that and organize all of it. And also it, it's not our entire donor base, right? It's, um, there are certain criteria. Um, and then the other thing that we have done that's a bit easier and scale. So I work for a scholarship providing organization to Native American students. And we get um, from time to time, actually quite frequently handwritten thank you notes that come from our students just to our organization in general, or sometimes to, um, the people who have established the sponsorship that they're benefiting from. 
And um, when we get those handwritten thank you notes, we'll often scan them or take a photo of them and either print them or send them, you know, broadly to a bunch of donors and say, hey, like, this is the impact you're having. Like, this is direct from our students. So we really like to share our student stories, but let them speak as much as possible, because um, that's pretty much as close to the impact as we can demonstrate. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, have you found, is there like a sweet spot when you ask board members to help, like having them call five people is a good number, 10 is too many, something like that? We're in the early stages, so I will keep you posted on how <laughs> it goes, but it's not very many per board member. And we probably have like 20-ish people on our board, and I don't think they're getting more than like five each, at least for now. Um, but we've also... Our president and CEO is super accessible, and so if if it could help a relationship, she's always willing to just write a quick, quick note or something like that. So um, we're pretty fortunate to be able to leverage all of those um, people who are involved with our organization. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions or shared experiences? Katie, I don't know if, I know you said you were in the car today. I don't know if you want to talk about what it was like to coordinate the effort of writing 150 handwritten thank you cards with high school students. That might have been a little difficult at times. Um, actually, they were super excited to write them. So I bought a packet of 150, like, blank cards that had different designs of thank you and I brought our annual report and it was actually exam time so I didn't think they would be enthusiastic but it was a welcome break from exams and I just showed them the back of the annual report with all the names and said will each of you write a name to a donor and they were so excited they wrote their stories like just paragraph and paragraph and some of them were artists and drew and I tried to go to each girl and say you're writing to this person and I told them the backstory and so the effort was me getting back to the U.S. and hand addressing all of those and putting stamps on them, which took me a good six weeks. Um, and then I added a little note to the back of the sealed envelope that said, enjoy this note from KGFA. Um, so there was context. And I, and I wrote it from me personally, the return address, so it wouldn't look like, um, like it was coming from the foundation, so it looked like it was like a personal note from me. And then when they opened it up, it was actually a personal note from a girl in Kenya. So it was very, very successful. I got a lot of people emailing me and calling me, thanking me for them. So a lot of effort, but definitely worth it. Yeah, that sounds like a really meaningful touch point. Um, Michelle, do you want to speak to Allison's question in the chat? Yeah, I don't know if we have... Um, specific data on this. I'm curious if Next After has any studies that they've pulled on or have done on um, comparing an email from a specific person compared to an organization email. Um, what we have seen is um, when using a personal name in an email through MailChimp mostly um, so that we could compare easily to an organization sent email. Uh, the open rates are often quite higher. Um, it's this association that someone personal from the organization and studies have shown that uh, if you actually use um, a, a person that's a program manager or a person who would be in contact with um, supporters more frequently, it's actually, um, I don't want to say convincing, but it's uh, very realistic that this person could and would be reaching out um, studies have shown that this is uh, a um, a setup that may garner more opens than if, let's say, the uh, the CEO, exec uh, executive director, um, were to reach out. So that's one strategy if you're sending, considering sending from a specific person um, to to consider. Yeah, we can see if we can find some of those studies and link them in the follow-up email that we send you guys. Um, 
any other questions or experiences anyone wants to share? Hey, it's Allison. Can I just ask it instead of typing in the chat? Of course. Um, when we have recurring donors, they get an automated email every month when their donation process is. How often should we be reaching out to them in addition to this kind of standard thank you email to let them know we see them, um, you know, we see their monthly gifts come in, things like that? That's a really great question. Um, so I, I have, I feel like I have a two part answer to this one. Um, the fact that you're sending an automated receipt to them every month when their donation processes, um, it's very good that you're doing that. Um, MasterCard recently changed their regulations around subscriptions and basically said, if you're charging someone every month, you have to email them and tell them they're charging them every month. So great job doing that. Um, and then in terms of what to send them on top of that, um, our general rule of thumb is it, it's nice to send one special touch point to your monthly donors each month. So it's something that's separate from your general newsletter, it's just for them. Um, every donor audience is different. So it, it might be possible that your monthly donors would rather hear from you once a quarter. Um, or once every six weeks instead of once a month. Um, but we we do try to do something once a month that makes them feel like they're really special because that monthly recurring revenue is so valuable. So we've done things like um, invited them to have a Zoom with the executive director of the nonprofit. Um, sometimes it's just like an insider update, like, hey, this is something that we're, we're dealing with over here, or here's an exciting project that we have. We haven't told anyone about this yet, but we're telling you um, just to kind of make them feel like they're in that inner circle. But as with any communication, I would say it's, if once a month feels like something you don't have the bandwidth to do, that's important to consider too. So maybe quarterly updates is a good place to start. Thank you. Can I tack on another question to that? Um, we use Pardot in conjunction with Salesforce for our emailing program. Um, and when donors are opted out, Pardot will not send an email to them unless you can indicate that an email is um, an operational email, you know, something important like, I, I, I don't know if you had a utility account or something, right? Um, So these people, even on these news or gratitude emails that are not solicitation emails, we should not be emailing anybody that's opted out, right? That wouldn't be considered, quote, operational. Right. Yeah. The, the monthly receipt would be, but anything above that. Right. Would not be. Thank you. And, you, you know, you could try to use that receipt email, like you can throw a PS in there. There's some statistic out there that says some people only read the PS of an email. So you could throw in a PS that says like, you know, something cute to entice them to sign up. Like, hey, make sure you're not missing out on all the fun activities we're up to in Nepal these days. Like, are you subscribed to our emails? Like you could you could try to sort of like gently encourage people to sign back up. But um, yeah, some donors just don't, they don't want to get email. Unfortunately, or you can even change the content of that thank you email quarterly or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think as long as it's um, still nice and short. Yeah, you totally could. I think we can probably end it here for the day, give you guys 10 minutes back in your schedule. Um, Michelle, Julia, anything else you guys want to add? Oh, Anjanette, do you have a question? Hi, no? yes, thank you so much. This was really, really incredible. I just have a quick question regarding 
um, newsletters and personal emails to donors. If donors are on newsletters, is that considered a touch point with them? Or are we only considering touch points being certain like emails of engagement, of impact reports, or like, you know, the rules of give, give, ask? Is a newsletter part of that give? Is a thank you part of that give? And then we can do an ask email or how would you kind of view that cadence? Yes, I think a newsletter is a non-ask cultivation touch point for sure. Um, it's interesting, I haven't heard give, give, ask before. I've heard you should have seven to 14 non-ask touch points before you make an ask, um, but that's a lot. So give your last down to the earth. <laughs> yeah, and we would consider any of like the tips that we went over today um, all to be a touch point um, in one way or another. And on my end, just thank you everyone for joining. I hope everyone has a really great year end season. Please feel free to reach out if you need someone to bounce ideas off of or join us at um, office hours. Thanks, Purpose Collective. Great job. Thank you.